Hi, welcome to another video. I hope you like it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's go to the video. Mercedes-Benz SLS. This review was first published in issue 223 of Top Gear magazine, 2011. As supercar makers often do, Mercedes-AMG chose Monaco as the place to let us have the SLS Roadster. This is not a place for going fast, well, not except for two hours on one Sunday of the year, and then only for a strictly limited number of drivers. Normally, the traffic moves like treacle, there are loads of expensively fast cars here, but they're all confined like cheetahs in a tiny zoo cage. If supercars could wear facial expressions, theirs would be baleful and unfulfilled. It's especially poignant for Mercedes sports cars. The SLS and AMGs have always had a reputation as favored transport for a certain kind of Monte Carlo wealth. Even before we drive it, then, Top Gear knows that the SLS Roadster will doubtless be a heck of a lot better a sports car than it needs to be to please those buyers. In this environment, all it needs is style and luxury, a tolerably plush ride, and the ability to glide through the traffic in auto mode without jerking or stuttering. To that end, there's a new suspension option of adaptive dampers with three settings, including a decently pliable comfort mode. Thus equipped, the ride isn't as remarkable as a McLaren MP4-12CS, but it's not jarring or bone-shaking. And the twin-clutch transmission is attentively smooth in gentle auto-mode driving. Its annoyances come to light when you're going hard, strangely. And, of course, its other job down in Monty is to impress everyone in the pavement cafes. No bother, there. The Roadster, bar the obvious exception that it doesn't have gullwing doors, knows exactly how to make the very most of the SLS's assets, long bonnet and speedboat-like tapering tail. There's enough decorative applique to please the bulgari-wearing set, but the big wheels and the sheer number of air inlets and extractors make it look like it does actually mean business. So does it? Cobblers to the crowded Riviera. Time to point the long bonnet inland, up some mountain COLS. Ah yes, business is very much on the agenda. The engine is almost comically sure of itself. On the way up through the revs, there's all the colossal torque you'd expect from a big, fat 6.2-liter lump. Then comes a hell-bent urgency in its full throttle race to the red line, which is at 7,500, but feels lower because e you get there so soon. And, because e it does perfectly well without a turbo, thanks, there's never ever any doubt that it's going to do its stuff right now, almost before you've asked. All of which you get in the gullwing, of course, but the roadster makes it yet more insanely, magically vivid because it puts you at the heart of the soundstage. As you accelerate, it's like you found the biggest lion in the jungle and yanked really hard at its tail. On the overrun, November 5th comes firing and banging out of the tailpipes. It's not quite a perfect powertrain, though, for all the throttle's immediacy, in manual, the box has an infuriating latency, a half-second delay between pulling the paddle and getting the shift. Poor, Ferrari and McLaren avoid this. The new adaptive damping sport mode, which is definitely the one for quick road driving is, engineers say, about the same as the regular chassis setup, and the Roadster's weight is only 40 kilograms up on the gull wings. The Roadster's body shell was actually the first of the pair to be engineered, on the grounds that if that was stiff enough, the coupe would surely be fine. Weight distribution is unchanged, too, quite rear-biased, because the V8 is behind the front wheels and the gearbox is at the back. So you won't feel any difference in the way they handle. To begin with, I wasn't sure if it suited me, this is one of those cars that never seems to weight up its front tires. Okay, racing drivers love them, but I'm a road driver. The steering's quick, if just the right side of nervous, and, as soon as you ask, it dives into the corner and immediately throws all the action onto the back tires. That's how you know how much grip you've got, the rear's always telling you. Not sliding, if you have the ESP in the sports setting, it stays safe, but also ever wriggling, ever alive. And so are you. In the end, I got converted and very definitely didn't want to stop. People say the SLS is tough at the limit, and I don't doubt it or wish to go there, but it's a hoot when you stay inside the edge, because it tells you. This is proper supercar stuff, 571 brake horsepower, all that noise, all that acceleration and ceramic brake stopping, all that cornering joy. I'm transfixed. It's every bit of the occupation I need or want.
but there's more to distract you if you care for it launched on the Roadster, but soon coming to the Gullwing is a new bunch of AMG readouts on the NAV screen. You can call up real-time power and torque readings and throttle and brake percentages or longitudinal and lateral G. I'll watch the road, thanks, but it'll give your passenger something to think about. Or, on tracks that it recognizes, you can't use your Ring Road Street Circuit, or indeed Monaco, it'll record all those readings, plus lap times, in a set of telemetry traces you can download and analyze later. Also new is a full internet connection that runs Android, so you'll soon be able to download car-related apps. Facts if you are a fan of Mercedes-Benz vehicles, aware of important factors like the Mercedes-Benz GLC price, then it is highly likely that you might have heard about AMG. If you don't know already, AMG is an aftermarket tuning company that specializes in producing performance versions of the Mercedes-Benz vehicles. It is owned completely by Mercedes-Benz, but that wasn't always the case as it started as an independent company that made a big impact in the automotive world. Here are some interesting facts about AMG that you may or may not know. It is named after its founders. Ever wondered what the letters AMG stand for? These letters represent the names of the founders. The two men named Hans Werner Aufrecht and Erhard Melcher were the founders of the company. The letters A and M represent the surnames of both the founders, while G was taken from Grossesbach, which was the hometown of Aufrecht. It started in a garage. Just like many success stories of some of the biggest corporation of the world, AMG also started in a small garage in 1967. Hans Werner Aufrecht and Erhard Melcher were both German engineers who left their jobs at Mercedes-Benz to start their own company. Despite resigning from the company, their love for Mercedes-Benz vehicles never vanished, so they decided to modify their cars to convert them into race cars. The 300 SAL AMG the car that put AMG on the map was the Mercedes-Benz 300 SAL 6.3. The 300 SAL was a full-size sedan by Mercedes-Benz with a massive 6.3L V8 engine. The car produced 250 HP and had a top speed of 137 miles per hour, which was fairly decent for a luxury sedan at the time. AMG took this giant car and converted it into a race car. They shaved off almost 430 pounds off the car and converted the engine displacement from 6.3 to 6.8L. After the modification, the car was able to produce 428 HP, and the top speed was also raised to 165 miles per hour. The race version of the 300 SAL went on to win many races, which was a huge leap for AMG in the automotive world. SLS AMG had bombs. Mercedes-Benz SLS AMG was introduced in 2010 as the top dog of the brand sports cars division. Just like the 300 SL, it featured the glorious gullwing doors. An interesting fact about this car was that it had little explosives installed in the hinges of its doors for emergency situations. For example, if the car gets rolled over, these explosives will unhinge the doors so that the passenger and driver can escape easily. One man, one engine. All of the engines built at the AMG factory are handcrafted, and they have a policy which says that only one man should work on the entire engine. Hence, these engines have a signature plate on them that bears the name of the person that built it. Thank you for taking the time to watch the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Goodbye.